A neighbourhood dispute is never a reason to kill someone. But in today's case it appears that this is exactly what happened. But if you dig a little deeper, a few levels of complexity mean that the reasons behind the crime are more nuanced and a petty dispute puts these neighbours in the sights of a man who has become a ticking time bomb. This is the case of Colin Reeves and this is Murder of Crows. For this episode we're heading back to Somerset and travelling to the village of Norton Fitzwarren. It is a picturesque village in a beautiful part of the world where a sense of community is encouraged and cherished. In this village next door neighbours Jennifer and Stephen Chapel and Colin and Kaylee Reeves embodied this community spirit. During the coronavirus lockdown they had grown closer and regularly checked in on each other and all seemed well in the small village. Well at least as well as it could be during lockdown. The Chattels had two sons while the Reeves had two daughters. Their new build style homes had allocated parking spaces as is normal for newer developments. But it seemed things between the previously friendly couple began to sour in early 2021 when Jennifer Chapel passed her driving test and the family bought a second car. While the chapels did their utmost to squeeze both cars into the single space, her blue Toyota would often overhang the space, partially blocking the Reeves' entry and exit into their space. It was only a minor issue, but the, the ongoing nature of the irritation clearly grew over time and it became a seething resentment where the Reeves would accuse Jennifer Chapel of constantly staring at them, including staring in through their windows, while Jennifer Chapel said that Colin Reeves went to the Garden Centre Cafe where she worked specifically to unsettle and intimidate her. Jennifer Chapel and Kaylee Reeves would dread bumping into each other on the school run. So the former friends were having their daily lives disrupted over a parking issue that was dragging on with no sign of resolution. In early November of 2021, the chapel's doorbell camera caught a particularly distasteful exchange between Jennifer Chapel and Colin Reeves. Peppered with insults and expletives it appears that both parties gave as good as they got, but it gave an insight into the level of ill feeling that existed as a result of the parking issue. Well, well. Yeah, we, could, we can't, we can't Daddy. reverse them here when the car's here all the time. Daddy! Where must you put it? Daddy! You can talk about that. You've got one car, you can Eh? It's not. It is. You don't have any Well, it's not work. What do you do around your car? Something's got to be off the ticket. 
She's the one who started it. So The issue had become more combustible since Stephen Chapel had bumped Colin's vehicle and it was taking time for that issue to get sorted out. But the bubbling frustrations were being complicated by the Reeves home environment. Colin Reeves was a lorry driver but had previously served in the army including a posting in Afghanistan in 2009, with him leaving the army in 2017. Kayleigh Reeves said that when Colin returned from Afghanistan, he was a changed man, with him apparently returning as a different Colin. He became more paranoid over time, and this put an ongoing strain on the marriage with both parties seeming unhappy. Colin found his job as a lorry driver lonely and it seems that in early November of 2021 he told his wife Kaylee that she would be better off without him. So home life was seemingly a fragile environment. On November the 21st 2021 Colin went with his mother and his children to see some Christmas lights being switched on and en route they stopped at a war memorial so Colin could pay his respects to fallen comrades. But on his return home things shifted considerably because this was when Kaylee suggested a two-week trial separation to him. And this appears to have been the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, for the army veteran who apparently just sat on the stairs and cried and cried. Kaylee left him to gather himself, but it was shortly after this that the chapel's rear security camera caught something sinister in their back garden. It seemed a man was attempting to stealthily move towards the home and it appeared that he had something quite long in one of his hands. Shortly after this the peace of the neighbourhood was shattered with a series of screams and a man shouting, die, fucking die. When all dropped quiet again, this same man was seen on the rear security camera, but this time all pretense of stealth was gone, and he just hops over the fence. Neighbours rushed to the chapel home, which was the source of the disturbance. And they were met with a grim scene, with Stephen Chapel in a pool of blood near the rear door, and Jennifer Chapel also heavily bloodied next to the sofa. But the question of what actually happened was short-lived as a 999 call was made to authorities. The caller was Colin Reeves and he admitted what he'd done. You're through to the police. What's the location of your emergency? Uh, I've stabbed right, when the neighbour's that? husband and the mother. Right, where are you at the moment? Dragon wise. Okay. Rise, is that Dragon Rise? Yes. All right, okay. Where did the incident happen? Sorry? Where did the incident happen? Um, Dragon Rise. All right, okay. And are you safe at the moment? Yes. Right, have you got any injuries? Whereabouts have you been stabbed? No, not me. The neighbours. The neighbours been stabbed? By who? By me. By you? Yes. Right, okay. And where are they? 
Are they in their house? Yes. All right, stay on the line for me, okay? How bad are the injuries? Uh, they've both been stabbed. Right, times. Okay. Several times. All right, stay on the line for me, okay? Are you in your house on your own? No, I'm with my wife, my children in bed. All right, okay. All right, tell me exactly what's happened. Tell me exactly what's happened. Take a deep breath. I went round. Yeah. With a knife. Okay. And I've stabbed both of them. All right. How many times? Uh, I don't know. A couple of times each. Not two or three times each, maybe. Okay. Are they still conscious and breathing? I don't think so, no. Okay. Okay, are you at home now? Yes. And are they males or females? One male, one female. Okay. And you're currently in are you? Yes. All right. All right, stay on the phone to me, okay? What's your name? Colin Reeves. All right, Colin. How are you spelling your surname? R W E V E S. All right. And did you say your wife is with you? Sorry? Did you say your wife is with you? Yes. All right. What kind of knife did you use? It was a dagger. Okay. All right, just stay on the line for me, okay? We're going to get some help out there as soon as we can. All right. Stay on the line for me, okay? Okay. How long ago did this happen? Uh, about 20 minutes. All right, okay. All right, Colin, just stay on the line to me, okay? We're going to get some help out there. So you stabbed them both several times? Yes. Where's the knife now? This is my house. Okay. All right. You've done the right thing by calling us, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right, just stand on line for me. Just getting some details done on the log, okay? What happened when you left? What was what was their situation when you left? They were both, oh, she was lying on the floor. She was she was lying on the sofa. Right. Okay. And were they awake? Were they? No, I think they were sort of drifting. And what room are they in? In the living room. Okay. Rather unsurprisingly, he was arrested shortly after he had made this call. Put your hands up. Not me, mate. Him. You? Go in the house, then. Put your hands up. Right. Put your hands up. Right. Hold still. Hold still. Listen. You're under arrest at the minute on the attempted murder of two people inside the address next door. Do you understand? Okay. Let's walk over here a minute, out the way. Can you guys just... All right, that's fine. We'll sort it. While he admitted everything in the 999 call, when it came to actual questioning at the police station, he changed tack. Firstly, I just need to ask you, when you were arrested and brought into custody, when you were being assessed in the custody unit here, you said to the, um, the uh, I think it was a custody nurse, I shouldn't have done it, I've ruined their lives and mine. Can I just confirm, did you say that? No problem. And what did you mean by that? No problem. Okay, Colin, in as much detail as possible, tell me what happened yesterday in Dragon Rise that led to the deaths of Jennifer and Stephen Chappell. Explain to me exactly what happened inside Dragon Rise.
Did you kill Jennifer and Stephen? No comment. How were you involved in their deaths? No comment. Perhaps having had time to think. He was claiming that his PTSD had caused a flashback, perhaps triggered by security lights reminding him of flares while on the job. And he believed he was back in the army and was just doing his job. Whatever the truth of the matter, Colin Reeves had taken a ceremonial dagger that had formed part of a plaque he had received for his army service hopped the fence, then entered the chapel home and stabbed the couple at least six times each, which rather differed from the couple of times that he said in the phone call. All the while, after the, uh, during this attack, the, their sons were upstairs in bed. Much of the investigation and legal process revolved around Colin Reeves' mental health and well-being. Since the facts were clear, but the reasons much less so. Not that there was any scenario where what he did was acceptable, but there would need to be clarity around his legal responsibility. During the pandemic, Reeves had taken a job as a security guard at Hinkley Point, where a nuclear power station was being built. But he quit this job, unable to shake off the feeling that he was under surveillance from the cameras there. There was also focus on how the parking saga had lingered and worsened over time. Each house on their street had only one designated parking spot. And Jennifer Chapel began to park on an undesignated area that did not block Reeves' spot but it did make it slightly trickier for him to manoeuvre. Reeves took umbrage and in May of 2021 confronted her aggressively and told her, you can't park there. Jennifer Chapel was concerned enough to contact the police. She told a friend He's ex-military, so he definitely thinks that he should get what he wants. And in messaging another friend, she said, the developers didn't take into account that people would want to park in front of their own houses. Apparently, it's the biggest deal in the world to him, meaning Reeves, and he's made it a personal vendetta. The housing association that part owns the Reeves and Chapel houses, a company called Live West, or Live West, however you want to pronounce it. The company was alerted and sent out a note advising residents, we advise that you only park in your allocated parking space. All of this aside, tension still grew. On the 11th of November, 10 days before the murders, Reeves launched a torrent of abuse at Jennifer Chapel, swearing at her and insulting her. Again, she reported this to the police, and at that time she messaged a friend expressing frustration that little had been done following her earlier contact with the police in May. With her saying, I called them before because he tried this before and they did jack shit. She described him as a trained killer who gets off on how I react to his popping off. A police community support officer contacted her 
she said she did not want any formal action taken but wanted her concerns put on record and the officer flagged up the situation with Liv West. When he was booked into custody following the murders he gave his military serial number and said that it had been an operation. When he later testified at his own trial Reeve said he had been physically abused as a boy and had had suicidal thoughts since he was 12. He said he joined the army aged 17 and had been proud to pass the commando course. He accepted he was a trained killer though had not actually killed while in the army. He argued that he must have been suffering an abnormality of mental functioning at the time of the killings. The trial which began on June the 8th 2022 at Bristol Crown Court did not dispute any of the facts but rather focused on whether Reeves could use a plea of manslaughter by reason of diminished responsibility. Reeves was found guilty of murder on June the 17th, 2022. On the attempted murder of two people inside the address next door, do you understand? How many times? Uh, I don't know, a couple of times each, not two or three times each, maybe. Okay. Did you kill Jennifer and Stephen? No comment. How were you involved in their death? No comment. And on June 21st, 2022, he was sentenced to a minimum of 38 years, given the brutality of the attacks. Speaking after the verdict, D.I. Neil Mead, the senior investigating officer, says he did not buy Reeves's claims that he was mentally unwell. He did not believe Reeves had planned the attack, but catching sight of the dagger as he sat on the stairs, he had acted spontaneously, with the DI saying he saw his life falling apart and he acted. The force's handling of Jennifer Chappell's concerns about Reeves uh, were investigated by the Independent Office for Police Conduct, but 
it was hard to find that the officers did anything wrong with Meade saying nobody could have predicted what happened. Two psychiatrists examined Reeves and diagnosed depression but not severe mental illness. He told one that life felt dark all the time and she judged that he had regressed to his training at the time of the attack. The jury at Bristol Crown Court was told there was no dispute that Reeves had killed the chapels. The only issue was whether his plea of manslaughter by reason of diminished responsibility could be accepted. Their verdict showed that they too did not buy Reeves' explanation for his brutal attack. Reeves went on to appeal his sentence and in a small victory his minimum term was cut from 38 years to 35 years on 21st of March 2023 at the Court of Appeal in London. Three appeal judges agreed that the term was excessive and cut the minimum term to 35 years. Sitting at the Court of Appeal in London, Lord Justice Holroyd, Mr Justice Kerr and Judge Timothy Spencer handed down their ruling on Reeves's challenge at a hearing at the Court of Appeal. They concluded trial judge Mr Justice Garnham should have given more weight to mitigating factors such as Reeves' remorse, the depression that he had, his military service and the fact he had confessed to the killings. Reeves will still need to serve at least 35 years, so we can forget about him for a long time. Of more concern throughout all of this were the two sons that were orphaned by the murders of Stephen and Jennifer. Rhonda Godley, Jennifer's sister, described the process they went through, with her saying, my sister and brother-in-law were the most wonderful parents I've ever known. The love they showed and taught their boys was incredible. They should still be here looking after them, tucking them into bed at night, reading them bedtime stories and easing their little minds for any worries that may occur and watching them grow up to be wonderful human beings. All of that was stripped away in one night. I think that hurts every one of us in the family the most. With their ages, their boys will most likely grow up with no memory of their parents, so they'll never really remember a time when they had their parents. When I was told the news as soon as I woke up, it felt like my heart had been ripped out. I thought I was still dreaming and this was all a dreadful nightmare. The first month was dreadful, waking up felt like a chore. Reliving the call telling me what had happened, not being able to stop thinking about it. Every waking minute I was, and still am, stuck, trying to figure out what on earth could have happened to cause this. Finding out how it happened hurt the most, in their own home while their two children were asleep in bed. I am incredibly grateful to the police officers that carried the boys out of the house 
so they didn't have to see anything. Three days after it happened, we decided it was best to let the boys know what happened. I told them, as I lost my dad when I was four, and found out when I was seven, so I knew what was needed and what would help them with the grief. We knew the earlier the better so they didn't have to keep wondering where mummy and daddy were. I told them that they'll always be watching them just to look out for the rainbows and they're there and at night look up at the sky as they're in the stars too. The pain it caused me to have to tell them still rips through me every day to see their hearts break on my lap and the cry that came from the oldest I'll never forget it. We went with other family members to identify the bodies. For me it was to make sure it was real as it still felt like a horrible nightmare. When walking into the morgue and seeing them, I knew I'd lost them both for good, and it was a living nightmare, one that I will never wake up from. They looked asleep and peaceful. I just wish it didn't end this way. This kind of grief has been the worst I've ever dealt with. I couldn't eat, I barely slept, and have been constantly thinking of all the possible ways it happened. How? Why? Did they, def did they defend themselves? Did they try to get to the boys to protect them? Did they try to call for help? I don't believe I'll ever know the answers to all of the questions. But the trial will give some sort of closure to hopefully stop my imagination getting the better of me. And that was the horrific case where a parking dispute tipped the scales in a man's already broken mind leading to their brutal murder because he wanted someone to take his upset and anger out on. In ten minutes of idiocy and rage two people lost their lives and another lost his liberty. This video is of course dedicated to Stephen and Jennifer Chapel. I hope their boys are being surrounded by love and all the support they need to get through this tragic loss. Thank you for watching another episode of Murder of Crows. I'm Steve. Samson is around and about somewhere, but evidently too busy to come and talk to you. I, I know the feeling, don't worry. But I'm Steve, and I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>
baby. 